according to data published by FMDQ. As at Wednesday, the Naira fell against the U.S. dollar at official <coughs> markets. The local unit closed at 931 Naira, 23 copper per dollar at the official window on Wednesday, compared to the 878 Naira, 57 copper rate recorded in the previous session on Tuesday. Market rates gathered from currency dealers across major states in the country. The dollar exchange between the rate of 1,325 Naira and 1,330 Naira to a dollar at the black market segment on Wednesday amid soaring demands. Arise business analyst Chika Mbonin joins me now for more on these stories. Good morning to you, Mr. Chika. It's great morning, to see you. Morning, 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 morning. Yes, How are you today? Very well. Thanks on yourself. Yeah, no great. problem at all. Thank you for life. Yes, we have to. A new day. It's a new day. Well, let's begin with the CBN. Now, you know, we have this Ford liabilities paid to the tune of $2 billion. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even talking about the foreign airlines yet. Uh, that's about $61.64 million. Well, I mean, I mean the, um, the, the, bigger, the major story here is the press release, the, what they talked about. Yeah. And um, the infractions, Absolutely. so to speak. Yes. Um, now, for the benefit of our viewers, what has happened is that um, the Central Bank of Nigeria appointed, said they said they appointed um, a top forensic um, um, auditors Audit. or accountant or whatever it is, who have gone through the bids, the forwards. I'll explain that in a minute. And I've tried to um, identify um, those that have irregularities and, that, and, and so on. Now, Put it this way, the Central Bank is near the almost social supply of foreign exchange at the time. Yeah. And so customers submit bids to Central Bank of Nigeria for foreign exchange through their banks. And then what Central Bank does is that a customer demands for $5 million, Central Bank allocates and does all those things. And then signs of all those, they're going to give the dollars with the documents already submitted to Central Bank. And then what happens is that Central Bank then goes, then goes and says, and before you submit these bids, you must cover them, with, put Naira in place immediately. From the one, you have your Naira in place. So if you borrow this, you're paying interest. If you use your money, you're losing interest. And so CBN just says, okay, we submitted this bid. You find it acceptable. We'll allocate this $2 million to you. However, we shall give it to you in three months' time, 90 days' time. Now, what has given rise to this situation is the 90 days came. And CBN, cumulatively, severally, didn't keep their, keep their word. That's what has given rise to this. And so it kept accumulating. So uh, the last can almost said it's $7 billion. I guess CBN now said I've settled about $2 billion. So it remains about $5 billion. And then I'm going ahead to look at these bids, outstanding forwards that they didn't deliver on, to find out those that I have, you know, you know Nigerian English, Kapalans, Kelek. And, and let me put it out there up front, first of all, that. We are in support of Central Bank of Nigeria sanctioning any institution, no matter how high, that has used fake documents, illegal documents, to you know look for FX from Central Bank. So that one will support. Now, the the, the other issue that follows from here is this: that this is a CBN thing. It's a CBN thing. Done by a past administration of Central Bank of Nigeria. Right. Customers submitted their bid, put the Naira in place. Remember, I've removed those that are illegal, that bids, documents were fake or whatever. But I've gone through some, I've gone, I've gone, I've gone through some of the lists, uh, the reasons for them they gave. So the reasons include uh, one number didn't coincide with another number. Uh, amount uh, demanded was um, uh, uh, bigger than amount asked for. You know, so many other reasons. As you're going through the list, you will think that, pardon me if I say this, that it's like a father that doesn't have enough food to give to his children. And so he say, you didn't greet me, greet me in the morning, so you not eat. He didn't wash plates yesterday, so you not eat. All trying to force the, this thing, the appetite of your children, or those who will eat, to fall into the amount of food you have to give out. And, and, and for me, CBN needs to prove that that's not the case. Because a lot of situations there relate to that. This was done by the Central Bank of Nigeria. It's not a, 
the, the CBN or it's a CBN is a continuing institution. So the screening has been done. Customers have been advised that they, they, they won the bid and the bids are gonna be delivered. Remember I said those are fake documents, let them sanction. But there are situations where there are genuine demands. But they say, oh, this didn't happen, this didn't happen. And also, this didn't happen, didn't happen, where because of CBN, institution, not doing their work properly or whatever they didn't do. And so, vendors abroad have been informed that we were expecting delivery from Central Bank. Correspondent banks have been informed that way that dollars are supposed to come from Central Bank. And so on and so forth. Now, after holding this one naira and this naira for more than one year now, you won't deliver the dollars. People have lost uh, this in revenues, and then this is happening. CBN has given a, a window, a proviso to the banks, and said anyone that they contest, the MD of this bank plus the chief compliance officer should sign a letter to CBN to protest. That's it. That's actually the. The situation. It's important you mention this because we can't talk about infractions without looking at where the loops and the gaps are yeah. because certainly there's some cracks somewhere. Mm. Now, where does the onus lie? Who is responsible for making sure that these stop gaps are in place? And uh, why only now? So these are very important. I, I have points. issue with that because the customers must always be, um, you know, um, put aside from, from this battle between the banks and Central Bank of Nigeria. A lot of customers have, are actually very innocent in this situation and have made commitments. And so, again, let no analyst come and start getting surprised that the other market is spiraling out of the way. Because let me tell you what will happen now. It, it doesn't require rocket science. If you chase away people from this CBN market, deny them these four deliveries, commitments have been made, Swaps have been sold. So many things have done. Where are they going to get the dollars to cover the position? It is that other markets. So that's why it's looking like a mirage. CBN sent out a letter and said, would have done $2 billion. So despite, the question you should ask therefore is, despite all the good efforts of $2 billion and doing whatever, why are the rest not uh, uh, going down? Because of the fact that some, this kind of things, people are seen being chased to go to the alternative uh, market. And so, I always talk about doing holistically in whatever decisions you make. But one decision you make in this way will affect uh, the other decisions. I know that we're trying to you know, manage the effects we have. We got, we got this from the African Bank, the arranging one from us. So, very low, small, we want to manage it to fit into what we, we can do and therefore eliminate as many as we can. But they should also look holistically and think about the bigger picture. Because the customers should actually be safe from this. A lot of them put their naira in place for the last one year, and then the dollars have not been delivered now. Some banks have made comments on that basis, and so on and so forth. But I keep saying it, those who use fake documents should be punished. Because they made allusion to other security agencies and so on and so forth. That's okay. But I've seen through some of the reasons they gave, some of them actually are CBN things. All right. Well, certainly a lot of housekeeping needs to yeah. happen there. And like you yeah. mentioned, the customer really needs to be uh, mm. protected and uh, have the very good faith. But let's look at the parallel market exchange rate falling to a record low of 1,320 naira to a dollar. Abby, what factors are playing? Abby, yeah. I've stopped looking at that market. <laughs> you, mm. You're tired of it now. Yeah, I've stopped looking at that market because I just told you, it's demand and supply. That will always play. You know, demand and supply. You cannot, <clears throat> if you don't give your children food in your, in your house, and you're worried they're going to your neighbor's house to go and eat or eat from the dustbin. It's a given, isn't it? It's a given. I mean, they could, you won't, you, unless you come back from work and see them dead. Dead of hunger. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, if they need to eat and you don't provide them food, you know, they're going to find something where to eat now. So, are you surprised, therefore, that the alternative market is, is paranoid? No, of course not. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah people are people, people required to do their trade. That business is every day, you, you know, look at the airlines. They saw CBN generously give about $2 million out, you know, which they send a press release. But you saw the, the report, the, the report from the airlines that this is like a drop in the ocean. It really is a drop in the ocean. Uh, in the ocean. So, you know, think about it now. Wouldn't the airlines work? Wouldn't they buy petrol, uh, aviation fuel? 
and so on and so forth. They, they're med ticket sales. They need this money to run their businesses. How are they going to survive? <laughs> Very interesting you know, points yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, let's not get tired of it though. It's really much recurring. Yeah, so it's, we, I mean, it's just, it's just, what I'm just saying is that sending the billions of dollars into the market, this market now, if we have, by miraculously, you know, this is the time for all our miracle workers to come and lay hand on the naira we have to convert it to dollars. So dollar will be everywhere. And well, then you see, you see the rates coming down. Let's, let's, let's just hope for the best of that, <laughs> what we can do. Let's very quickly wrap up with Access Bank. Oh, you know, 80% stake Access in Bank. Finance Trust Bank. Every day that you open the news, you hear Access Bank has bought this, has bought that. Access Bank is... I uh, mean, this week only, I don't know what, they bought an insurance broken company. Yeah. And then they're going to have approval to do uh, consumer lending, the oxygen. And now we are just um, we just took in the news about Zambia approval, and then suddenly and this Uganda, 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 Uganda you know. I mean, of course, the big picture for the Asset Bank Group is they want to be African payment gateway to the world. It's like you're running a race, and that's what you're wearing when blazoned on your t-shirt, and that's what. You know, they, so anywhere that is a, a very good asset, they gobble it up, they acquire it. And yeah. Uganda happens to be, you know, um, in the East African region, Uganda happens to be one of the critical countries there. And I even thought they had been there, and uh, but now they think GT is there, uh, UBS is there, no. And so assets going there is not surprising. And I acquired this 85, 80% 80 of the stake in this um, bank. And... Um, uh, about 35 branches. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, no, no, no. It's in Nigeria. You look in this this country. The five branches are a lot. True, that's true. In Nigeria, is where you have 200 branches. 300 is big. Yeah, so it's large. But I mean, they're going to recapitalize the bank yeah. because the, the Bank of Uganda is also requiring banks now to recapitalize. And so uh, we know that they have done very well with some assets they acquired already. The countries acquired already, and and this you can now. Welcome to the plate. Absolutely. You know. Well, mm. kudos to mm. Access Bank mm. putting mm. its money where its mm -hmm. mouth is there, mm -hmm. right? I mm -hmm. want to thank you so much, Rise Business Analyst, Chikam Bunny, for joining us this morning. We'll have lots more tomorrow. Hope we see you thank again you. tomorrow. Have a good one.